Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on voltage gated ion channels. Uh, so in this video what we're going to do is attempt the derivation of the Nernst equation. Okay, and there's going to be some sort of prerequisite, uh, prerequisite knowledge for this video. Firstly, I'm going to need you to know be familiar with the concept of a probability density function. I'm going to go very, very gentle, but um, prerequisite. I hope that this will be understandable to someone, even if you don't have this prerequisite knowledge. But it may well not be. Uh, so, ideally, uh, ideally, you would have this prerequisite knowledge. Uh, you would know what a probability density function is. I have a massive great playlist on probability, uh, in which we discuss what probability density functions are in a lot of detail. Um, um, I would also like you to, it would also be very, very good if you had uh, knowledge of the Boltzmann distribution. But if you, if you don't, don't worry. Um, you will, uh, uh, an utter prerequisite, I'm afraid, is that, actually, no, maybe not. Um, in fact, I'm going to write some of these prerequisites down. So um, the first one I said was that you will need to know what PDFs are from probability. That would be very helpful. Um, you would also need to know, what did I say next? Um, I don't know what I said next. Um, oh, maybe I was moving on to the next one. Okay, another bit of knowledge that would be helpful would be for you to know about the Boltzmann distribution. Again, it's not essential. If you know about the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, the Boltzmann distribution is basically just a cruder approximation than the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. But I will discuss all of these things and try and give an introduction to them. Um, then it would be very nice if you had calculus, some, a bit, some knowledge of what integration is. If you don't have integration, then you won't be able to understand the finer points of, of the derivation. Uh, but I hope that... Um, that I can explain exactly what the integral means, and then, okay, uh, there'll be a bit of magic where suddenly I manage to work out what that value is, but, um, yes. Uh, so, integration would be very helpful. Um, is there anything else you're going to need? Um, hopefully, knowing what the natural logarithm is, that would be very nice. And um, another bit of knowledge is slight knowledge from thermodynamics, i.e. that the average energy of a particle is proportional to the temperature. So, okay, that's what we're going to start with now. Um, so, we'll we'll start with uh, the, we'll, we'll go through each of these, and we'll go through this derivation, and we'll uh, start with this uh, first bit here, because the first thing that we're going to have to discuss is basically the Boltzmann distribution, and a bit of physical chemistry, basically, uh, because that, the Boltzmann distribution is where this equation comes from. The natural logarithm is there, because the Boltzmann distribution has the exponential in it. Okay, so let's discuss the Boltzmann distribution then. So, if you have a um, container, so let's say a box containing some molecules, some uh, so some atoms, so you can imagine them just as little billet balls flying about, basically. Okay, and you want to know what is the average energy of these uh, balls in this uh, of these uh, of these molecules in this gas. Basically, the energy, the average energy of these um, molecules is proportional to the temperature. If you heat up a, um, a thing of gas, the molecules start moving much, much faster, basically, and that's because they've got more kinetic energy. So the energy increases as uh, you, as you um, raise the temperature, basically. Okay, uh, so uh, that's a very important concept, and the Basically, long ago, they tried to work out what the actual proportionality constant is. So basically, if it's proportional, it basically means that it's some constant times t. So you could just replace it with k for constant times t. And basically, they worked out what this value is. And that is called the Boltzmann constant that is in front of it. Uh, can I remember what the value of it is? It's some tiny little value. I think it's something like... Actually, no, I shouldn't give it... I don't know what the value is. It's something in the magnitude, though, of 10 to the negative 23, I believe. Um, actually, I think I can. I think it's 1.38 or 3.2. Um, I think it might be 1.38 times 10 to the negative 23, but take that with a pinch of salt. I think that is potentially the value of the Boltzmann constant. To make it even more clear, occasionally... Because K, you know, K could be anything. So occasionally you will see it written as KB for Boltzmann constant, basically. So that's how we'll denote it in here. We'll denote it KBT. So basically, the average energy of a molecule in this gas 
uh, is equal to KBT. That's just an empirical constant that they worked out. It, as you heat it up, uh, the average energy increases, and, that's, and, it's, and how much by is given by this equation. Okay, however, do all of the molecules have exactly this energy? Of course not. Some uh, will have more than their fair share, so some of them will be whizzing around with more energy than is their fair share, i.e. some of them will have more energy than this, and obviously um, some of them will therefore have to have less, because this one has nicked the energy from another one, basically. So some will have less than their fair share of the energy. Okay, so what we would like to know is how is this distributed? What is If I take uh, a molecule in this gas, what's the probability that if I measure the energy that that molecule has, that it is a certain value? And uh, obviously, energy, um, energy is not generally, uh, in classical physics at least, approximated as being discrete. Whether energy is discrete is a big debate in physics, but... Um, Energy, at least in classical physics, is approximated as being a continuum, i.e. you can take on any value from zero onwards, basically, any positive real value. Uh, so um, it's not going to be basically, you, ca you can't describe a probability, so let's say, um, so if I want to know what the probability that the energy of a molecule is some little x, where little x is some number between the real line, you cannot actually work that out because this is a continuum. It could have absolutely any value between there. Obviously, you, it can't have more energy than is in the entire box, so there will eventually be some finite value at which it stops and it cannot go higher than that. But basically, the probability that it is any specific value is going to be zero because of the fact that there are so many numbers in this real line. There's infinite numbers in here. There's more than infinite. If you know what uncountable infinity is, it's ridiculous the number of real numbers there are. So the probability that it's going to take on some exact real number uh, specified to infinite number of decimal places is going to be zero. However, what you can do is instead you can uh, ascribe to every point on this positive real line a probability density function. So that's what instead you do. You ascribe something called a probability density function. And basically, the probability density function doesn't tell you what the probability that the energy is equal to some little x is. Instead, what it says is take a little interval delta x, of size delta x, at the point x. So you take this interval from x to x plus delta x. So this is an interval in the real line. Okay, so you take this little interval, and instead what you say is you can work out what the probability that this, that the energy, the energy of a particle, so again you've picked some random particle in here, and you can't say what is the probability that the energy is actually equal to some specific real number, because that's just zero, but you can say what is the probability that energy is within, uh, so this is the fancy math symbol uh, for within, it's an element of the set uh, which is denoted x to x plus delta x. So that's just maths notation for this interval. So this interval from x to x plus delta x is denoted x square bracket around it, comma, x plus delta x. So that just means this is just maths notation for that orange interval that I've drawn there. Okay, and that symbol just means is an element of. So it's saying what is the probability that the energy is within this orange interval, basically. And you can work out what that is. Um, because that's going to be some actual value. You can work out what the probability that it's within that interval is. Now, imagine making delta x smaller and smaller and smaller. What's going to happen? This probability is going to go to zero, basically. But what you could do is you could imagine dividing this by delta x and working out uh, what how dense the probability is. So basically, this, this is the probability that you're actually within this orange interval. If you divide it by the length of the interval, then what would you get? You will get the amount of probability for a certain length, basically. So uh, if you take any old interval and you divide it by its, uh, the probability, you take the probability that you're within that interval and divide it by delta x, what you will get is the probability density. You will get, for a certain amount of length, how much, uh, pro what's the, how much probability is there that you're in there, basically.
And basically, if you take the limit as delta x approaches 0, it's almost like a derivative, basically. If you take the limit as delta x approaches 0, this converges on zero, uh, th th sorry, this converges on something. It, it actually has a value, so you can make it smaller and smaller and smaller, and get a more and more precise answer for what the probability density is. And this is what it, this is a central concept in statistics called the probability density function evaluated at little x. Okay, so basically what you can think of it as is really you can think of it as being if I take a tiny, tiny little interval, then the probability uh, uh, around this point x, so if delta x is absolutely tiny, so let's say a millionth of a millionth basically, then the probability that you are in that interval x to x plus delta x is approximately equal to the probability density function, which is just some function ascribing a real number, a positive real number, to every point on this interval 0 to infinity times the length of the interval. So if the length of the interval is, say, a millionth of uh, one, one, in, 1 divided by a million, then you'll take the probability density function evaluated at that point in the x, and you'll times it by 1 over a million, and that will give you the probability that you're within that interval x to x plus 1 over a million. That's approximate. It basically, that will converge on being true as delta x is... Uh, converges on being zero. So if it's one over a million, it will be a very, very, very good approximation. Uh, if you like infinitesimal intuition for calculus, then really you can think of this as being, if you make the interval infinitesimal, then the probability that you're within that interval is the probability density function times the dx, if you want. Okay, um, uh, right, so that's the concept of probability density functions. Now, Basically, what you can do is you can plot this probability density function, and basically the Boltzmann distribution is a hypothesis for what that probability density function should be. So I'll remind you what we were actually doing. We were saying, if you have any, if you pick any molecule in this box of molecules, and you want to know what's the probability that it has a certain amount of energy, then uh, we can we can formulate a probability density function for that, which you can roughly think of being as a probability. You can think of it as being a probability. It's slightly more technical than that. It's a probability density. So it's, But you can think of it as representing how likely are you of getting that energy. And basically, you will know from A-level chemistry that, um, or, or whatever other course you've taken, um, that it should be distributed like the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. It should look something like this. You should have some average energy here, which um, from this argument is KBT maybe. Um, well, that actually the peak might not necessarily be the average. So the average might be more over here. I do apologize for that. That's just the peak. Uh, I'm talking about the whole average value. It might be somewhere more that looks like that. Um, okay, so it's got some average value and then basically you have you're very likely to get values over here, less likely to get very, very small values, and as you get bigger and bigger, it gets very, very less, uh, less still. Now, that is mathematically complicated. The Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, the actual equation for this graph is complicated, whereas the Boltzmann distribution is a simplified version of this. So if I draw another graph down here, and I'm going to draw the Boltzmann distribution on, so let's put the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution on, basically. And the Boltzmann distribution is basically the same as the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, except for at the low values. So the Boltzmann distribution might look something like this. So it goes off up there, so it gets a different value up there uh, on these low values. And that's why the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution is a better a better version, because of course, you know, what's the probability that you're going to get an, uh, a molecule with energy zero, or really close to zero? It's going to be very, very low. And this is saying it should get higher and higher and higher. So it becomes a bad approximation as you go lower and lower. However, for higher values, for more normal values, uh, it's a very, very good approximation. And what's beautiful about it is that it's very, very mathematically simple. And basically, uh, the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, uh, the sorry, the Boltzmann distribution, the PDF for the Boltzmann distribution is this. So the probability density function that uh, a molecule will have an energy uh, at little x, which you can roughly think of as being this probability. Uh, you can roughly think of that as a probability that you'll get uh, the value little x. That is equal to 1 over kBT, so 1 over the average energy of a molecule, times e to the negative x over kBT. Now, that may look like a monstrosity, 
if you don't like maths, but it's actually fantastically simple. You will... You don't be deceived by the fact that you've got this KBT and this KBT there. Once you've set the temperature at which you're doing this experiment, at which this box is, those are just constants, they're just numbers. This is a negative exponential function. That is extremely easy to integrate. And that's the important thing, that this is extremely easy to integrate. Okay, uh, so I'm not going to um, give a derivation of this equation. Um, because it's it's a it's a difficult argument where this comes from, uh, but uh, the, the, sorry, it's a difficult argument why this is a good approximation for the energy that these molecules have. But basically, you the if you take the average, if you take the expected value of this, if you take the average, which is denoted e of e, unfortunately, but I've called this um, this. Uh, this value E, which is, you know, the value of the energy of the molecule E, but the, in statistics we use this expected value to mean the mean of this. The average of this, if you work it out, it is KBT. If you know how to do that, uh, then uh, what you would just do is you'd integrate this, uh, so you take the integral of this PDF times x uh, dx, and you'd integrate that between 0 and infinity, and you just use integration by parts, and you do spit out this value, basically. Um, and if you know more about statistics, then you'll know that this E is actually exponentially distributed. You'll recognize this PDF, basically. It's a very, very famous PDF in probability, and it's basically uh, said to be exponentially distributed with parameter 1 over KBT. OK, but if you don't know much about probability, then don't worry about what those mean. Uh, the important thing is that this is this the, this is the equation for that blue function, basically. Okay, right. So why is this so important? Why is this so important to the Nernst equation? Well, for that, we'll you'll have to wait for the next video.